My name is Teacher Dons. I will also be tutoring biology. And let me, let me share my screen. All right. My topic is RNA, DNA, and protein structures. So you can see on the screen, this is a DNA molecule. DNA is, stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and it is the material that carries all the information about how a living thing will look or function. Each piece of information is carried on a different section of the DNA. These sections are called genes. DNA is found in every cell of every living thing. Uh, it is found in structures of the cell called chromosomes. You can also see that DNA helps uh, to make proteins and allows living things to reproduce. DNA has a complex structure. It is made of chemical substances that are linked together like a chain. Each piece of DNA has two long strands or chains. There are two strands uh, that, are do that are joined together and they form a shape like a ladder that has been twisted in a spiral. Shown here is a nucleotide. Uh, DNA molecules are a string of these nucleotides. You can see that uh, the backbone of the nucleotide is composed of deoxyribose, sugar, and phosphate. And the nitrogenous bases line up in the middle. The next picture shows that there are four different kinds of bases in DNA. We have thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. These are categorized into purines and pyrimidines. They are distinguished by the number of rings that they are made up. The purines are made up of two rings and the pyrimidines are made up of one ring. To know which of which, pyrimidines usually um, contains the letter Y, thus P, pyrimidine with a Y, thymine with a Y, and cytosine with a Y. Then the rest will be categorized as Purines. So let's check your understanding. What are the different parts of a nucleotide and what are the nitrogenous bases called? All right. The different parts of a nucleotide are the phosphate, the oxyribose sugar, and nitrogenous bases while the nitrogenous bases are the adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Good job. Now let's proceed. The RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, and they function as a storage uh, of the information from the DNA. In the central dogma of life, um, the primary role of RNA is to convert the information stored in DNA into proteins. They also act as enzymes and, regula and regulator of gene expression. Notice that the shape of RNA is a single helix and it also contains four nitrogenous bases, namely the cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil. The adenine joins with uracil and guanine joins with cytosine. Now let's take a look uh, at the next picture. Notice the difference in the structure of the DNA and the RNA. The DNA contains two intercoiled strands, but DNA contains only one strand. The DNA contains the bases adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine, while RNA has uracil instead of thymine. 
RNA also contains ribose sugar as opposed to the oxyribose sugar found in DNA. These differences result in RNA being chemically more reactive than DNA, thus making it more suitable molecule to take part in cell reaction. Now let's check your understanding. What is the type of sugar that can be found in RNA? And what is the difference in the nitrogenous base of DNA and RNA? Very good. The type of sugar that can be found in RNA is ribose. And the difference between DNA and RNA when it comes to nitrogenous base is that DNA has thymine and RNA has uracil. Very good. Now let's go to proteins. Proteins comes from the, from the Greek word proteos, meaning primary. And the most common macromolecule uh, that composes protein is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. That's why sometimes we refer to protein as chon. All right? Uh, these are complex combinations of amino acids. Uh, amino acids share the basic structure, which consists of the central carbon atom, also known as the alpha carbon, bonded to an amino group, which is the NH2, and the carboxyl group and a hydrogen atom. There are 21 amino acids, acids which, which compose living organisms. Amino acids are linked by peptide bonds to form what is called polypeptide chain. Uh, let us take a look at the illustration. The carbon on the carboxyl end of the first amino acid is linked to the nitrogen of the amino end of the second amino acid, giving off water or H2O and forming the peptide bond. Right? So remember the hierarchy of linkages. Uh, amino acids as the monomers, peptides, combination of amino acids, polypeptides are long chains of amino acids, and proteins as the folded and functional polypeptide. Right. Now let's look at the structures of protein. We have the primary structure, the secondary structure, the quaternary, the the tertiary structure and the quaternary structure. So what is the primary structure? The primary structure refers to the linear polypeptide chain, which does not achieve any folding state. So by convention, the primary structure starts from the amino terminal end and ends in the carboxyl terminal end, okay? Each component amino acid in the polypeptide is called a residue. Now let's go to the secondary structure. So the secondary structure refers to local folded structures that form within a polypeptide due to the interactions between atoms on the backbone. A possible hydrogen bonding that may occur in the backbone of a protein dictates the secondary structure. So we have here, the most common examples are the beta pleated sheets and the alpha helix. Okay, what, uh, what causes the shape to be helical or sheeted is the hydrogen bonds. Now let's go to the tertiary structure. The tertiary structure is the three-dimensional folding pattern uh, due to the R or the acyl side chain interaction. Um, it's caused by um, hydrogen bonding, ionic bonding, dipole-dipole interaction, and the London dispersion forces, basically the whole gamut of non-covalent bonds. However, there is one special type of covalent bond that contribute to the ter tertiary structure. 
which is called the, you can see it here in the picture, the disulfide bonds. It, uh, the disulfide bonds acts as a safety pin, keeping the parts of the polypeptide firmly attached to each other. And then lastly, we have the quaternary structure made up of multiple polypeptide chains, also called as subunits. So we have um, dimers, trimers, and tetramers. So what are these? The dimers consist of two peptide chains, the trimers, which consist of three polypeptide chains, and the tetramers, which consist of four polypeptide chains. The illustration that we are seeing right now is uh, an example of quaternary structure, which is our hemoglobin. So we have here um, the beta chain, the beta plated chain, and the alpha helical chain. And we have two more here. Uh, there are four um, polypeptides here, so we call the hemoglobin as tetramer. All right. To check your understanding, what are the four levels of protein structure? We have here the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. And what are the building blocks of proteins? We have the amino acids. All right. So that's it for today. And I hope to see you again next time. Thank you.